Do nail products go bad? This might be a concern for some of you um, who are at home right now and have your nail products stored away. We're gonna talk about this, what you can do right now on this talk. My shoes are really dirty and I blame you. Uh, stop stealing my opening lines. Please. I got a word Nobody me cares. for him. Mm, no. mm, mm. <laughs> Nobody cares about your shoes. But if it is, if they are dirty and it is because of me, you just made my day. I got to say. Sorry. Ooh, that rhymed. Rhyming and stealing. I'm going to start rapping. Oh, God, that's hot. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. Can Let, let's get to the conversation. Into the this, is, this is really getting ugly. You don't want me rhyming and stealing. <laughs> um, Okay, right now there's a lot of nail professionals um, around the world who are not able to do services. They can't go to the salon. They've got a lot of product mm. stored in the salon. Um, I think generally speaking, understanding you know the chemistry on a very basic level of, of do products, do nail care products go bad is important, especially now though. Um, but this is an interesting topic for me because I know we would get phone calls from time to time of people saying my, my product you know went bad or it froze up or you know obviously contamination is a whole other issue that we can talk about but let's go to the basic of do nail products do they go bad in the salon <laughs> while being stored Tracy now you can talk eventually we're good now go ahead Eventually. I'm, I'm allowing you. <laughs> Kidding. It's way too Continue. much time with you. I know, right now. I know. Quarantine. <laughs> um so so let's Eventually, talk about yeah, this. Yeah, it does. Eventually, yeah, but, they do. I mean it's a long time. Yeah. Uh what would cause okay, when we say go bad, what are we talking about here? Because obviously there's acrylics, there's gel, there's nail polish, there's gels, uh gel polish, there's all kinds of products. What are we talking about? When, when we say, do they go bad? What do we mean, first of all? They just kind of start breaking down. They, they, yeah. they, they're they not as effective. You start having issues, lifting, right. crumbling, whatever it is. Right, right. And in your opinion, what causes that? What causes them to go bad? It could be, I guess, if you had it forever in a day, but you, typically it's extreme weather. Correct. Um. So extremely hot yeah or extremely cold where stuff starts crystallizing and things like that right the general rule of thumb for nail products on the manufacturing side is keep temperature control so um exactly if you're in an area where the weather if it gets insanely hot and your mm -hmm. salon is plopped right in the desert and you don't have air conditioning it's probably a little bit of a concern it's you know? difficult because uh for me, when I lived in Reading, I mean, it gets 118, 120. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. So you really, literally, we kept the air conditioning on at night at a reasonable, we're not talking right. like keeping it down to 60. We'd turn it down to like, you know, 76 yeah. around there yeah. and keep it good. And because not only was uh, were we worried about the it breaking down, but man, when the product's hot, yeah, the gel's running everywhere and the acrylic's setting up like cement. So Correct. it's a problem with that too. Yeah, that's exactly right. We've obviously you don't want to leave your gels in next to your window, you know, <laughs> where they're gonna they're gonna cure. Have I, you done that? I've done that. Seriously? I did. Like open? No, it was more my brushes. When I oh. first got my uh, place, I had a uh, right by the window. I never had that before, and you know my cute little containers. So. And it's nice to have a, a station by the window, right? Yeah. Like get natural light. I loved light. it. Yeah. But no brushes. Yeah. Not <laughs> it was good. Bad, bad idea. Yes. That's never a good idea, especially after you use them in gel to leave them there. They're going to cure. Right. It can be hard as a rock. And there's no, there's no going back after that. No. Yeah. No. So like, but there's a lot of people that maybe right now their salons are in extreme temperatures. They're, they can't go to their salon. So like, what do you do? And you're going to leave the air, obviously, um, not working. There's money issues. You want to try to save on utilities. You're thinking, do I keep the air off? I mean, th there's, there's some things to think about here. Well, I think right now, fortunately, because 
it's more of a springtime. Temperature is pretty even everywhere. Might be cold still in some places. That's okay. So that's that's good. But I mean, what is the ideal temperature, would you say? Every product um, can handle temperatures a little bit differently, right? So like gels are going to handle temperature differently than like a monomer, mm, right? right. Um, a it's nail usually liquid. the opposite. Like yeah. one gets hard, one gets runny. Correct. You know? So that's yeah. exactly right. And um, a lot of nail products naturally evaporate, right? So like, for example, nail polish, and we call that a flash point. So for example, nail polish, when you open it, it's evaporating. That's why when you keep nail polish in storage for too long, after a while it gets thick mm. because it evaporates under like normal conditions. I think it's got to be relatively cold for it to not evaporate. So um, you don't want to go too hot because it's going to evaporate faster, which means your product is going to you know lose its its whatever main uh, chemical structures sooner if it's hot and it's going to go bad faster. Okay. So for for um for me if i was in the salon i'm going to use my common sense and just really keep it at like a, a a consistent room temperature what you said 75 76 i think that's pretty ideal for almost all we always say store in a cool dry place right okay that's like standard across the board so if you're storing it in a cool dry place you should be good. You know, cool being around that 76, 77, you know what I mean? Like not cold, not in the 60s. Right. But um, cool and dry. You don't want to have moisture. You don't want it to be humid because that affects the product. Uh, you get humidity that mixes with you, especially your powders. If you get humidity, like too yes. humid with acrylic powders. I've left my powder in a car one time and it you know it kind of gets that sweaty yeah and you open it up and it's all crusty yeah exactly yeah never leave your nail products in the car ever <laughs> i also did that with a polish one time and it exploded, exploded. yeah that's exactly 118 jeez that's yeah. insane um so at at a certain point like if you're at i mean i don't know how uh reasonable it is to say bring your nail products home if you're a single uh um booth renter it might be easier for you to take the time if you're not going to keep the temperature on in the salon you might want to just bring them home and storm at home where you are going to have more temperature temperature control right temporarily that might be the answer if you're a full-blown salon it's you're gonna have to keep the temperature on you can't and i'm sure hair products are going to be the same thing i would imagine yeah like hair color bleach all that would right. probably be the I would think. Yeah, there's going to be certain factors that are going to impact the quality of the product if it gets too warm. Usually, um, as long as it's not freezing, you're going to be good. But cool, like even if it's you want to go colder than than warm or hot, right? Any day of the week. Yeah, that's a certainty. I've I've had product crystallized before because it just got too cold. How cold? Like like refrigerator cold? It yeah, it was pretty pretty darn cold in the room. I. It just overnight it got really really cold and um we didn't leave the yeah. the heater on at yeah. all so then i just i really tried to maintain the temperature around 76 after yeah that. i but think 76 is like it's really perfect that way you will never have an issue now there is something on jars you know it's called the the pao and it shows little little cap opening on the back of the jar it's called period after opening hmm. that's the date it'll have a number of months where like we're basically saying as the manufacturer, your product is going to be good for at least this amount of time. Right. You know what I'm saying? After it's been opened. After it's been opened. So it's sealed. You store in a cool, dry place. The period after opening, once you crack it open and you're using it, you know, it should be some, I think it's 12 months, some is 18 months, some is 24 months. If I had my glasses, I could tell you. But I can, let me see that. I could tell you. Oh, uh, I can't see either. I think it says PAO. It's a little jar and it's 12 months on this acrylic jar. So that's kind of like we're we're going to go conservative. Yeah. We want to make sure. I mean, hopefully you don't have a powder, you know, for for too much longer that you're using it. But I understand 
Um, I mean, you would have to go crazy, I think, with bulk. If you're using a powder on a regular basis, that would be weird to have something yeah. for 12 months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Especially right now. I wanted to ask, though, in my mind, when I had, um, like, I would buy my back stock. Yep. I always kept it in the dark, like in a cabinet. Is mm -hmm. that, does that make a difference? Well, I, I think, um, are you talking about regular light? You're obviously sunlight's not good. No, no, just, just like regular. I always just felt like I needed to keep it in a cabinet. Yeah. So, I, so. I don't know if it made a difference. In some of our rooms, uh, we put UV bulb protectors, like sleeves over the bulbs so that over the it, filled gel and stuff like that yeah right? so that it, it if there's any uv emitting from the lights we make sure the product is protected i would i mean i think dark is safe okay um it's probably okay for most products but if you if it was dark obviously um whenever you want to cool down temperature in an office or anything what do people do they turn the lights off right, right. so like that's probably just good practice you okay. know keeps it nice and cool um, and as long as it's dry in there, I think you're going to be good. Cool. So, um, if you're at home and you're concerned about it, I would say the first thing is, you know, either make sure the temperature is controlled in the salon, or if you can't do that, potentially bring them home and just keep your stock there. That way it's safe. It's a big investment. We totally understand that. And, um, hopefully a little bit of this education on how to keep your products fresh and what they look like, uh, what impacts them and affects them to go bad helps you during this time. Tracy, once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us and we will see you next week on the Biz Talk.